Welcome to Obsess Garage and the introduction of audio solutions, I guess for the garage, but really for anything. And we're going to start with the Dyn Audio music line. And just to get you started and uh, either move you on to the next video or help you decide whether you want to stay here and listen, listen about this stuff, I'm going to tell you the price. I hate how everybody hides the price of things. I just want to know what it is. $350. 349 $499, $699, $899, and the bracket 79 bucks. So if you're still here and you want to keep going, I'm going to tell you the story, tell you why, tell you all about um, uh, what my plan is to offer uh, audio solutions for the garage, uh, and we're going to work specifically with the Bluetooth and uh, Wi-Fi uh, music line, Dyn Audio calls it, the, the 1, the 3, the 5, and the 7. We're going to work through that here today. So your first question would be, well, you're a garage guy. Why in the world are you uh, pitching me audio stuff? Well, I, I do technically have an electrical engineering degree, <laughs> believe it or not. Uh, I got that in, I graduated in 2002. I uh, got my four-year bachelor's in electrical engineering from Villanova University. While at Villanova, I took a job at a high-end stereo shop called Bryn Mawr Stereo, where I started off selling car stereo equipment. And my work worked my way into home theater. And then when I graduated college, worked my way toward designing bigger systems, doing projectors and 480p scalers and, um, and, uh, and screens and theater seating and all of that stuff. Uh, and so my first passion before cars, before I could drive, has always been electronics, has always been uh, computers and audio gear. I actually went to Villanova as a computer engineering student and realized that really my real passion was audio. Now, I wasn't smart enough to be uh, to go work for Yamaha or Denon or Harman Kardon. Uh, and so when I got the job selling stereo equipment, I realized that that's my calling. I'm pretty good at taking you know, technical topics and breaking it down into something that matters, at least matters to me. Uh, and so my background is this, my passion is this. I listen to music more often in the garage than anywhere else. Uh, and so when I decided to make an end-to-end -end solution for the garage, uh, audio has always been rattling around in my brain that I'm going to have to provide solutions. Because it's not as simple as people think. Go try to shop for some audio for the garage. There's so many choices. And so I know I have a lot of people that are interested in my take. Uh, and we're going to have various various options starting with the simplest which would be a Wi-Fi or Bluetooth enabled speaker. So Dyn Audio, uh, I never was fortunate enough to sell this stuff. Uh, I was never, it was never one of the lines when I worked for uh, Bryn Mawr Stereo which became Tweeter and I worked for Worldwide Stereo for a little while uh, for just a few months uh, and then moved to Florida and worked for Sound Advice. Uh, we never had Dyn Audio, but it was always my, I was always crushing on, on Dyn Audio stuff. So I knew that my big get, if I could get a speaker line and start with something, I wanted Dyn Audio. And there's a big reason for that, and that big reason is, you can't see it behind here, but you'll see it in, in future speaker setups that I, I share with you. You can see it here on the, on the LYDs behind me. Dyn Audio uses a traditional silk dome, a dome tweeter, uh, and or soft dome tweeter. And think about the garage. The garage has, I'm looking at mine here, I have metal cabinets, I've got a stainless countertop, I've got a metal back, I've got metal uppers, I've got a metal lift, a metal car, concrete floors with some plastic tile on them, uh, we've got this shiny stuff, insulation on the garage doors, you've got metal garage doors. So it's not a particularly good uh, listening environment. And so when you take a really smooth sounding um, dome tweeter that's made out of silk or some synthetic fabric, uh, when you take a soft dome tweeter and you put it in a really harsh environment like a garage, you get a much smoother listening experience. 
Now, you're generally not doing critical two-channel listening in your garage. If you were, you'd have a little section of your garage where you had acoustic treatments that was set up for that. Uh, but in my garage, I'm going to plop a set of bookshelf speakers, or I'm going to plop a Bluetooth speaker on the countertop, and I'm going to let it rip. Uh, and so Dyn Audio is, a, I believe, a perfect match for that application, that environment. Now, this is pretty high-end stuff. I mean, these are some of the most expensive little speakers on the planet, uh, but there's a reason for that. Um, these speakers are using the same uh, type of driver, the same materials as their confidence line, which they have a $45,000 pair of speakers. Um, they have some older speakers like the Evidence line were eighty, ninety thousand dollars $90,000 a pair. So you're taking a company that makes extremely high-end stuff uh, and then they're taking all they've learned over the 60 or 80 years the company's been in existence and they're including it in these rather simple uh, shelf-mounted or tabletop uh, wireless, wireless speakers. So um, you're getting the same MSP type cone material that the Confidence and Contour lines have in here. Now it's not the same driver, it's not the same crossover, uh, but it's, it's of the same uh, ilk, it's of the same design, it's the same guys that are designing those really high-end drivers and crossovers and putting it in, in, these, in these, um, these little speakers. So soft dome in the garage makes a lot of sense. These have soft dome tweeters, uh, which I think is, is perfect for the application. And then you have these speakers. The music line reminds me, especially these two, remind me a lot of uh, the functionality that I get from, say, my Ego blower. I use that blower to dry off my car when I'm done washing it. I also use that blower to blow off the driveway. I also use that blower to, you know, to blow out the gutters. Uh, and so you have multiple, you have multifunctionality with that. So the Music 1, the Music 3, uh, the, you're seeing the blue and red example. But these two, um, they're, they have a battery. And so they'll play for eight hours on a single charge at, I would guess, 50% volume. Uh, and so the one has a little um, power supply, uh, but the, the three has a power supply built in, so you do have to plug this into the wall uh, when you're charging it. But you can unplug it. You'll see no degradation in sound quality. You can carry it around wherever you want. And so you could plop one of these. For a, a decent sized garage, I would suggest the three. At, uh, at 500 bucks, but um, this gets you multi-use functionality. You can carry it to your kitchen. I, I carry this one in the bathroom and listen to podcasts, taking a shower. Um, these aren't waterproof, but uh, just keep it out of the shower and you're good. Uh, but the, the multi-functionality of the one and the three, I think are pretty sick. Uh, this is the example in blue. Uh, this is the obviously example in red. This is uh, the dark gray, and then I have the Music 7 back here in light gray. Um, all four of them are available in all four colors. We're going to stock the dark gray the most. I think it's the best color if you're looking for my advice. Uh, but if you want something crazy, maybe you have a red theme going in your garage, you can get any of them in that color as well. So the sizing of these, obviously, the bigger you go, I wouldn't say the better it sounds. They all use the same drivers, the same tweeters, same type of amplifiers. Um, you get more output and you get a little bit better frequency response. So the one, so it goes like this. So this plays down to 50 hertz, 47 hertz, 45 hertz, and 40 hertz. Um, so they play up to 20,000 kilohertz down to 40 hertz. And so it makes sense as you work your way up the line, you get more drivers, you get a bigger woofer, uh, you get better frequency response. Forgive me, so I get this straight and don't get this wrong because you can't see the drivers inside of them. These grills, you could remove. I tried to remove one on the seven. You really don't want to mess with that. So these aren't designed to come off. They're designed to stay put. So I wouldn't recommend pulling it off. But the, let me pull up the specs here on, uh, on what drivers are what. So the one has a single one inch tweeter and a four inch woofer and has a two channel, I believe they're class D amplifiers. 
so it's a uh, 40 watt times two, so each driver gets 40 watts. When you go up to the three, you get, I think this one is a five inch woofer. Uh, yeah, so you get two one inch tweeters and a five inch woofer. Uh, both of these are sealed. Uh, both of these uh, do not have an optical input. Uh, they both have a, a regular three and a half millimeter uh, jack, so if you wanted to plug it in, you could. Uh, this, number, the three, has a USB input. So three and a half millimeter input, three and a half and USB, so you could plug, you know, you could plug USB and use it to charge your phone if you wanted to, uh, but, the, but the one doesn't have that option. When you go up to the five, the five, again, the fives have to be plugged in. There's no battery in here, so these are not technically portable. Uh, the five comes with, uh, it has two one-inch tweeters, two three-inch mid-range, and then a single five-inch woofer. And these are also not sealed anymore, they're ported. So there's a port on the back, uh, which uh, gives you a little bit you know, better bass response, a little bit better low frequency response. So this will play down to 45 hertz. And then the seven, the big boy, the seven is different in that just like the five, they have optical inputs. So you have, let me look at the five. Does the five have a, three inch as well, three and a half inch. So if we look at our inputs, yeah, the five doesn't have three and a half inch. It has uh, optical only. That optical allows us to be able to get, uh, to connect to a source like a CD player or a high res audio player, uh, where these will accept 24 bit uh, 96 kilohertz is what these will top out at from a high res capability perspective. But the seven, which has two one inch two three inch and two five inch woofers also ported you can see the larger port the seven has an optical in and an arc uh, hdmi connection so you could use the seven as a sound bar if you wanted to uh, and all of these just have a traditional you know, like a cable box type power cord the three the five and the seven all plug in via a traditional you know power plug without having a big you know big box that you have to you have to plug in somewhere. So you could connect and use the seven as a sound bar. They do make a bracket. This is a wall mount bracket that mounts and holds the five and the seven. It will bolt to the bottom of it. This bracket's pretty darn stout. Uh, but you could run the 7 as a sound bar, connect to your TV with HDMI. Uh, in, in any modern, you know, smart TV is going to have an audio return channel connection. It's usually input 2 or 3, uh, and it will send audio back and control the volume of the, of the Dynaudio, uh, uh, the Music 7, 7 speaker. So the biggest question I think people should have is, you know, how, how do you use these? You know, how do you use it? And right after I'm done ranting on all this stuff, uh, we're going to have in this video, Bryce is going to get into showing you how to do it on screen. Uh, so he's going to show you how to connect your phone, how to connect to both uh, an Android phone and an iPhone. Uh, but I use these pretty simply. Um, they have all these preset inputs. They have um, where it has internet radio, has DLNA, I don't even know what that is. Um, but I'm going to use high res audio, uh, as high res as I can. Um, I have a subscription to Tidal, uh, which has, you know, master audio files, uh, lossless files, um, but a lot of hi-fi stuff, a lot of 24 bit, 196 kilohertz stuff. Um, the, the, um, the other option is, you know, Spotify. Uh, Spotify's user interface I think is better, but that's, um, I think Spotify is 16-bit, 16-bit, 44.1 kilohertz, 320 kilobits per second is what it streams at, qual highest quality. So uh, Tidal is where I, if I'm going to do any critical listening. And these are again, this is a, this is a high-end audio company designed to accept, you know, high-res music uh, over and above just your regular, you know, streaming on Pandora at 192 kilobits per second. So the way that I use these is. It's a little bit clunky to set them up on your Wi-Fi network, but once you get it set up, it'll always remember it. Um, I'm generally going to use these with Apple AirPlay. If you look at any of the documentation on, on Dynaudio's site, it says AirPlay, but these accept AirPlay 2, which is significant because the quality is better. And I'm pretty sure, I don't know that Apple's ever really defined this, maybe some of you guys in the comments that know this 
uh, this is the kind of video you want to go read the comments because there's usually a lot of good information from people who know more than I do. But Apple AirPlay 2 is a lossless, uh, but it down samples or down converts to 24-bit 44.1 kilohertz. So it's technically high res because the CD quality would be 16-bit 44.1 kilohertz. And so if you're listening to a master audio file on Tidal, which is what I listen to a lot of, or a hi-fi audio file uh, on Tidal, uh, a lossless file, you would uh, use and stream it or connect it via Apple AirPlay 2, and you would get 24-bit 44.1 kilohertz, so above CD quality streaming from your phone, which is pretty sick. Uh, Aptex, this, these don't accept Aptex, the new Aptex HD, uh, but it does accept Aptex. And, um, I'm not sure how it does uh, Aptex Bluetooth with your Android phone, what the quality is. Uh, I think it's dependent, source dependent, but I, I believe that might be capped at 24-bit, uh, uh, 48 kilohertz, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Some of you Android users maybe can put in the comments what you know Aptex, not that Aptex HD, but what Aptex would would, would get us if you're connected via Bluetooth. But I'm going to use this with Tidal, Spotify. I'm going to listen to the Joe Rogan experience. I'm going to listen to you know Spotify and Tidal music, uh, and I'm going to listen to it over Apple AirPlay on my Wi-Fi network. If you don't have a Wi-Fi network or Wi-Fi out in your garage, you would just connect it via via Bluetooth, and we're going to show you how to do all that. So I'm going to transition this over to Bryce. He's going to show you how to set it up, uh, and then we'll wrap this up with uh, playing the speakers for you. And then you'll want to make sure to check out the individual videos. I'm going to make some individual videos showing you what the, what the inside of the box looks like and all of that stuff. So Bryce, take it away and teach us about how to use these things. The first thing you need to do is go on your phone and download the Dyn Audio app. So on the iPhone, it's just called Dyn Audio. If in the App Store, it's actually a different name, which can be confusing because there's about three different ones. So if you type in Dyn Audio, you hit search, and you'll see Dyn Audio Setup and Control. That's what it's called in the App Store. On your actual phone, it'll just be called Dyn Audio. So what you want to go ahead and do is we're going to take a Music One right here. Go ahead, turn this on. You're going to have little lights going across the top here. And on the side, the right-hand side, there's going to be two LEDs, one and two. One has Wi-Fi, one has Bluetooth. So let's go ahead and wait for this to start up. I'm going to open our app. We're going to go to the top where the three little dots are and hit Add Speakers. You're going to do Start Setup. You're going to select which model of Dyn Audio you have. So we're going to do a Music One. It says uh, make sure it's plugged in, powered on, so it doesn't you know, die in the middle of setting it up. And uh, power it on. So we're going to do that. It's going to ask you, are both one and two LEDs flashing? I only have number one flashing right now, which is Wi-Fi, so I'm going to say no flashing. It says, OK, so press this button for two seconds, and then both of them will be flashing. Now you just hit Next. It's going to start looking for the speaker. You'll see it pop up right here, so you select it. It's going to go through a setup where it connects it to your Wi-Fi that your phone's connected to. So just give it some time. It's going to work through. OK, now it says this AirPlay speaker it will be set up to join the SSBS, which is our Wi-Fi here at Obsessed Garage. I'm going to hit Next. It's going to start setting up the speaker to join our Wi-Fi. OK, setup is now complete. So in the app, you just hit Continue. It's going to look for your speaker. And now our Music One is in the Dyn Audio app. From here, you can change the volume, change the settings on the actual speaker itself. You can turn on like the noise adapt, the room adapt, change your bass and treble. You can rename it, you know, a bunch of other stuff. You can do your firmware updates through this app as well when those come out. Um, most of the time, I don't think people will be in this app, though, unless they're changing just the settings, because you can either go straight from AirPlay to this speaker, or if you have Spotify, you can select that speaker straight from there to play music. So we already have our Music One set up. So let's say you get two Music Ones, and you want to do a stereo setup in your garage, one speaker over there, one over there, stereo sound left and right. So all you have to really do, we're going to use our Music Three here as a demonstration. So we're going to do the same setup. So we're going to power it on, just like the first one. 
And then you're gonna go to your app, the three little dots at the top right, add speakers. You're gonna wanna add a new speaker. You wanna select a Music 3 or whichever speaker you have. It's gonna tell you the same thing, plug it in, make sure it's charged. It's gonna ask you, are both lights flashing? Go ahead, hit that. Both are flashing, we're gonna set that up for our second speaker. It's found it. It's gonna look for our Wi-Fi, that's our phone it's connected to. It's gonna set it up on the speaker so it's on our network. So now it's just going through, joining the network now, and then once that's done, we can set up how we want these speakers to be linked to each other. You can be either in stereo, or you can do a multi-room setup with six speakers. So now that we got both speakers set up, you can just swipe from left to right to view what speaker you're looking at. Each one can play a different thing or the same thing. So we're gonna go ahead and set these two up in a stereo configuration so you have your left channel and your right channel. From the top right, what you wanna do is hit stereo mode. You're gonna drag your speakers that you want left and right into the little circles on your screen. You wanna hit create stereo pair. We're just gonna call it pair one. It's gonna create it. So now you have a stereo pair with these two speakers, this being your left and this being your right channel. And you can play to both of these speakers as if it was one. Okay, so the next thing we can do is show you multi-room setup. And that's a little different from stereo. It's basically if you wanna have one speaker, once you had six of these and you just want them in you know, one whole room or different rooms through the house or anything, you just want them all playing the same thing. You can have up to six of them, and all you have to do in the app is go to the top right, hit your three dots, and do multi-room. And what you're gonna do is add up to six speakers to this group. So once say this was like your living room or something, and you had you know one by the TV stand, one by the kitchen, another one in your little like den area that's not far off, you can make that one whole group so all of those will play together. And is this you can have multiple groups throughout the house and choose how you want them to play. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit create speaker group on here. I'm just gonna call this one living room. Hit create. It's gonna take these two speakers and make it into the one group. There's no left or right separation. Each one just plays as it's meant to play stereo itself. So now you have your living room group made and that's all it takes. Okay, now that you have your speakers set up in the Dyn Audio app, you can go ahead and play to them via like Spotify Connect through uh, Apple AirPlay, through Bluetooth, and I'm gonna go ahead and show through a couple apps how you can set this up. So the one way I'm gonna use is Spotify. That's what I mainly use myself, and I know majority of people here at the office also use Spotify. So all you have to do is open up your Spotify app, select the little speaker icon here and computer icon by the play button, and you're gonna see your Dyn Audio speakers. We have our Music 1 and Music 3. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pick the Music 1 here and then all I have to do is hit play, and now it's playing. And I can control this directly from my phone for volume. So you have full control over the actual speaker from your phone right through Spotify. Another way you can do it is through the actual AirPlay setting here at the top from your pull down screen if you have an iPhone. So um, right now it just says it's playing for my iPhone, but I can select my Music 3 or my Music 1 from speakers and TVs in AirPlay. So I'm just gonna go ahead and select Music 1 from here. It's gonna go ahead and connect. And now it's playing through AirPlay versus playing through Spotify. So that's all it really takes for you to control music. You can also do it through you know, Apple Music as well, directly through their AirPlay integration through that app. But um, it's a little bit of a delay I noticed on AirPlay between hitting a play and pause. So you have about a second to two before it actually stops and starts. So that's one thing to notice when you're doing it that way. Okay, so that's how you set up your Dyn Audio Music wireless speakers. It's pretty simple once you learn the process and how you can set them up or put them in the stereo or do a multi-room setup. If you have an iPhone, it's super easy using AirPlay to stream to any of them in your house. And if you're using Android, you have aptX uh, Bluetooth as well. And you can also still do the Wi-Fi through like Spotify Connect through the Spotify app. So I hope it was pretty simple for you guys. 
Uh, enjoy your Dyn Audio speakers. Thank you for watching.
So that's how you use them. Um, these will be available in the store. Uh, I have them in stock. I'm going to stock these. It's a really significant investment for me to stock this stuff, but I think it's so freaking awesome that I think it's worth it. I hope you guys buy the stuff from me. Uh, but the, uh, the obvious choice, buy the 7 if you can fit the 7. Um, I'm likely going to have a 7 somewhere in my house and several 3s. Uh, the three is because of the ability for it to be used without being plugged in. So I can pick it up and carry it around. And I'm certainly not doing it in red and blue, um, but you know, if you want it in that color, it is available. I'm gonna do them all in dark gray. Uh, so the setup is, I think, or the choice of setup is pretty simple. You buy the one that you can swing. You can justify swinging. Again, 350, 500, 700, and 900 bucks is on the upper, upper end of a simple Bluetooth speaker uh, or simple you know, Wi-Fi enabled speaker. Uh, I'm going to have uh, all of the Dynaudio stuff that I like uh, available in the store. Um, this is the, I think, how you get started with audio in the garage, but this isn't, uh, my garage is going to have a set of non-powered towers uh, that are, you know, have a receiver and amplifier attached to them. But it's, you gotta draw the line somewhere, and I think that this is a good, high-end portable speaker that you can put anywhere in your house not just your garage but i'm telling you get yourself a music five or shoot even a music three it'll it'll do well in your garage for you so thanks for your support thanks for watching make sure to go to obsessedgarage.com uh, check out i'm going to have a video individually on these where i dig into how it's boxed and all of that stuff and uh, get into um, get into some more detail on each individual speaker but uh yeah, I'm excited about this. Stay tuned for the Dynaudio Zio line, the Dynaudio, the new version of the Focus HD, uh, Dynaudio LYD, uh, and then uh, Emit and uh, Excite, and well, I guess Excite was the old line. Uh, Emit, Evoke, uh, Contour, Contour Eye, and I don't think we'll get into confidence for the garage, but who knows? Maybe someday uh, somebody will want a set of $45,000 tower speakers for their garage. Uh, or, you know, again, we can provide this to for your house as well. So thanks for watching. As always, stay tuned for more crazy. This audio stuff is legit. I'm excited for it. See you soon. <laughs>